Hey everyone, it's Ashley here and I'm really excited to be channeling Hades tonight. Um, I mentioned or alluded to in my original post earlier today, kind of announcing that I'll be channeling him tonight, um, that he has popped in several times to come and, sorry, I'm kind of moving some things out of the way, um, come and speak with me. <coughs> Ooh. Excuse me. Whew. There's already a ton of energy here. <laughs> so, uh, oh man, and it's allergy season. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so what I was saying is, hey guys, thanks for joining. Um, I was alluding earlier today in my kind of announcement that I'm coming live tonight here on Channeling with Love, the Facebook group, um, to, uh, thanks Mimi, <laughs> um, to uh, come live. And I mentioned that he has popped in to speak with me several times over the last, I want to say like six or seven months. Um, he has, um, just ever so randomly kind of popped in to say hello. Um, and sometimes it's a little disconcerting because he's such a different energy to a lot of the energies that I typically channel, um, that it's, uh, kind of takes me aback a little bit and I have to kind of um, regroup a little and see, okay, what's going on here? Who is this person? And then, um, over that time, I've really gotten to quickly recognize his energy and he is, um, uh, yeah, happy Thursday. It's Wednesday. Oh, I want a heads up or give you guys a heads up. Most of the time when I'm in channeling with love, um, I do my lives on Thursdays. That's just kind of my day. I've scheduled it out. Um, but this week I am actually helping to teach the mediumship for mediumship 102 class with Kristen Davies and, um, up oh, speak of the devil. Here she is. <laughs> hey, Kristen. Um, and tomorrow I'm going live in her group. So a little bit of a schedule rearrange here. Um, so I am going live today, Wednesday, instead of my normal Thursdays. Um, but anyway, so getting to know him and kind of getting a sense of his energy. Um, it really took me some time to get used to initially um, because he's not really a person that I would naturally gravitate towards um, in my channeling and kind of in my own spiritual practice. Um, but it's interesting over the last like six, seven months since he started popping in, I've really noticed a lot of themes throughout um, the reading that I've been doing and different like TV shows and things that I've been really drawn to. Um, his energy and kind of like him as a character have shown up in so many of the books that I've been reading or listening to. I read and listen on Audible. Um, I really love that uh, app. And so I have a lot of books that are sci-fi, fantasy, magical, um, kind of uh, inspired. And he always ends up somewhere in that mix. Um, so it's really fascinating to uh, get to channel him and connect with him uh, because I think uh, humans overall, especially in the literature world, um, in our myths and legends, we really, um, uh, well, we don't, I don't, I don't want to say we gravitate towards him, but um, he shows up in a lot of stories. Hades and Mimi's mentioning, she doesn't know anything about him, um, is the Greek god of the underworld. And he is one of the, um, I guess, the main three Greek gods. There's Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades. And um, he is uh, one of the main head honcho guys of the Greek par um, pantheon of gods and goddesses. And he is really, really fascinating. He often comes across as kind of the bad guy. I mean, the, you know, Disney movie Hercules. Um, he is, you know, the ruler of the underworld. So that's um, for from the human perspective you know, kind of a scary thing. He's kind of a scary character because we don't really know necessarily what death is like. Um, when we're on this side of the veil, we have ideas and um, we all have different ideas as to what that looks like. Um, and he really represents kind of an unknown, but also in the Greek mythologies, um, he's, uh, you know, described as kind of this 
ruler over this kind of miserable place that everyone ends up being in. So um, it's fascinating to get to sense his energy. I don't ever feel like creeped out or weird or he doesn't feel low vibe. He doesn't feel like um, scary to me in any way. Um, and uh, so it's really cool to to be able to channel him. And I'm really grateful for him coming in um, tonight. I haven't really seen too many people or anyone actually. Um, maybe I'm, I might be missing someone who's channeled him before, but I haven't seen anyone um, channel him. And I, you know, want to give um, him an opportunity to speak and to say hi to people. And um, if you resonate with his energy or if you're just curious and you want to get a sense of him as a God, as a being um, and, and sense his energy, um, if you're comfortable channeling, um, you can always invite him in to just say hello. And you can, of course, have your boundary set if you don't want him too close or if you want your guardian angels to provide an introduction, that's always a way that you can do it when you're interacting with new beings. And whoa, my um, computer screen just like flashed kind of crazy. I don't know if you guys saw that, but um, that was really weird. <laughs> um, so yeah, okay, with that, he's here. There's a lot of energy here. Um, and how I'm, I'm sensing him, and you guys feel free to share how you're sensing him if you're channeling along with me. Um, he is coming in right on my left side, and he typically shows up on my left side, which is really interesting. I don't have a lot of beings that show up in the exact same way or show up in the same area as um, every single time I'm channeling them, but he's always shown up on my left side. And um, he's uh, just saying, hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, thanks, guys, for the confirmation. That was not just me, like, my eyes going weird or anything. <laughs> um, he's saying, hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and to speak to each of you. Ooh, and I'm getting goosebumps up my neck, onto my crown, and all through my upper back. He's really bringing in the energy now. Um, it has been an interesting, um, he's saying experience, an interesting um, time observing this dear one and watching her interact with energies, frequencies in which um, she has, who he's kind of putting me on the spot here, <laughs> um, frequencies in which she has been comfortable and challenged herself to um, uh, become accustomed to. And I have been intrigued in how um, she has walked her path. Um, she is a very open soul, allowing those of us who um, may not rank highly on um, people's ascended master or spiritual beings list, <laughs> he's kind of uh, chuckling at that. Um, whew, he's bringing a lot of energy. Um, he is just saying that now is the time for uh, me to make an introduction and to allow each of you, as you choose, um, connect with me or feel my energy, feel my frequency. Um, in the mythologies, I am an overseer. I am a being who resides in the dark bowels of the unknown. Often humans are afraid of what they do not know. Often humans put on blinders to cover their third eye, to cover their eyes, cover their ears protect themselves from being um, from being exposed to something that they may not comprehend in the moment. This is often the case uh, and this this is a choice. Humans have been making this choice for millennia. Uh, humans have been making this choice um, to preserve, their understanding and to be able to have that human experience, um, that contrast that is easier navigated when um, sure of foot, 
along your path. Um, but now is the time, and it has been so for uh, several years now, and it will continue to be so and grow into a time um, more so, He's saying there will be more energy essentially, where um, more and more humans are going to be uncovering their ears and listening. Um, they will be uncovering their eyes and seeing. They will be uncovering, unfiltering uh, your third eye and seeing past that which you can see in your physical world. And this, um, we are now moving into a time when more people are comfortable with that and being able to embrace and understand um, and allow themselves to not understand. This is a part of your awakening path. Um, many, uh, he's saying like characters, energies such as himself, um, pose a contrast for you to learn and to grow as you move forward along your path. Um, he's gesturing to Archangel Lucifer, to um, himself, to maybe other gods or goddesses who um, are not always um, perceived as the brightest, shiniest, um, most gentle of energies. Um, he's showing, Callie's joining us now. Um, Who a lot of energy is right here. And uh, he's highlighting that these beings also perform that role. Although um, we have no need to fear as um, we are also teachers. And um, in that contrast, we are able to help you explore your, um, saying like your true potential, your true fullness of spirit. Um, embracing both the physical reality and the spiritual reality in which we reside as humans um, and bringing them into alignment is uh, the ultimate goal. And he is here to uh, help in any way that he can um, help you in that goal. Um, his role has evolved over time. Um, when we humans here on earth believed in him as a god of death or a god of the underworld, he fulfilled that role. Um, and he's saying, as we believe, we create our reality. And we also create spaces um, for us to reside in once we are in spirit. So we created this underworld um, that he was embodying or um, that he was overseeing. Uh, he's saying more overseeing. It was a, a separate space from himself, but his energy permeated that area. Um, as people believed um, that that was where they would go once they passed on, they would show up and they would hang out for a time. He's saying hang out. They would be there for a time and um, they would learn um, that this was not the only uh, way or the only uh, destination once you passed. And once they were able to process and perceive um, a greater true reality, the ultimate reality that there is, um, you know, this heavenly place that we are not bound to suffer once we pass, um, their angels um, would come and retrieve them or help assist them to their true destination. So um, he, he performed a function to allow them to grow. And as we have progressed through time in our reality, time in our reality, um, we have abandoned this uh, perception of an underworld that he is an overseer of in that specific, you know, religious structure of the Greek um, gods and goddesses. And uh, we have replaced it with several other versions and we have learned and uh, have been and are evolving through those perceptions. And um, the, he's speaking mainly to people who live a more religious um, 
religiously focused life, not necessarily an awakened uh, life, but using that structure of more of a heaven and hell type of structure or a purgatory or some place in which you go where you have to repent or deal with the um, problems that you had to um, go through or the perceived um, sins or negative elements of your life, those that contrasting part of yourself um, before you are able to um, get into heaven. And he's saying that this is just simply a construct. And um, he, you know, had to operate within that as that was some people's realities. Um, but he ultimately enjoys and honors the privilege of helping um, us learn here in this school on earth um, about contrast and about our choices and about our thoughts and reality. Whew, that's a lot. Uh, he's giving me a pause here. Actually, he's encouraging me to drink some water. <laughs> I see we have a few questions here. I'm definitely not ignoring them. Whew. Um, so he's ultimately saying, and I'm going to ask him to recap that. Uh, ultimately, he plays a role in contrast, and he's here to assist, um, not to bring forth contrast, but to help you discern and move through your current life situations and um, gain clarity upon your path. Um, he is more of a um, kind of a removed presence because there isn't that direct um, kind of uh, connection to him as Hades, you know, the god of the underworld. And there's not that many people who still believe and perceive the Greek gods and goddesses as they truly were back in the day, you know, in that culture. Um, so there, there's quite a bit of shift. And, and uh, he's just highlighting that he um, really values his uh, role in, in helping to bring that clarity. Um, okay, and there's actually a question here specifically about his role. I just popped up. Will his role remain the same as we evolve as long as some people still create his role for him? Um, he's saying this is an excellent question. No, his role will evolve as um, it is needed. Um, there will be a time when no one truly believes that the underworld was a real place where you went. It's not necessarily um, even very prevalent today. Um, uh, he is really here to help evolve us along our path and to provide assistance. And he's saying the myths, the legends, the ideas of, of how his energy was perceived when um, there was more of that religious um, following um, before um, has really permeated a lot of pop culture, a lot of, as I was saying in the beginning of this, I've been reading a lot of books and for whatever reason, I've just been really drawn to a lot of books that have Hades in it. Um, I read a lot of different types of genres and he seems to just kind of pop up everywhere. I think he's a good uh, literary tool, but also um, his energy is really prevalent in a lot of people's minds and the Greek gods and goddesses are so fun to learn about and read about that um, it makes sense that he's still very much in the popular or I guess um, I guess uh, kind of popular literature and, and, and content of today. Um, but as we move forward, um, he as a person, a foible to uh, rally against or you know this lower vibrational perception of him is going to fall away as he is more removed. Um, so he will definitely evolve as we need him to in, in our connection with him. Um, but he is always, he's saying, my energy has stayed the same, but the way in which you interact has changed. So he is evolving, yet we are the ones evolving. Um, more of our collective consciousness is evolving when we connect with him in particular. Um, and he's saying, he's kind of gesturing to a lot of the other gods and goddesses, not only of the Greeks, 
um, but also the Roman versions of all their energies and many other gods and goddesses as well. Um, so he's very interesting, this one. I love talking to him. Really great question. Thank you so much. Okay, let's see here. What is his definition of the underworld? Yes, he's saying um, it was not necessarily um, his definition. It was definitely shaped by the um, manifestation or creation of the people of the time when he was really popular in connecting with humans um, and more prevalent. Um, the concept of the underworld, um, lower um, under the world, literally like in the earth or below the reality in which people were living. Um, that's where you went. You were put in the ground, you died and your soul traveled down into the depths of the dark. And um, that's where you were to stay. And they didn't really, uh, the humans, he's saying at the time, excuse me, um, the humans at the time um, had this concept of you left, you were not here when you died, you um, crossed that river, um, the river, um, I don't know if, if River Styx was from Greek mythology, he's saying there were some, the ferry boatmen, you had to like pay the ferryman to cross over, and then um, you could get into uh, the underworld. I think it's, I think there's a lot of layering with like Dante's Inferno and a lot of other myths and stuff there. But um, he's just saying that ultimately it was what was created by humans. Um, it was a, an afterlife, an image of afterlife that um, was not super pleasant. Um, and he, you know, had to, in his own way, kind of adapt to the uh, ev evolution of the imagery of the underworld, um, but he also influenced it in taking up that mantle and being that contrast for humans um, to use and learn um, because we need that contrast. And as he provided many examples of other beings who provide that contrast, um, uh, he's not the only being that we've needed to turn to to kind of um, learn through the different emotions and situations and experiences that we choose when we come here on earth. So I hope that answered your question. I feel like he, he answered it in kind of several layers there. So it was a little uh, meaty. Um, but yeah, Amanda has a question here. What is the spiritual lesson in the stories, uh, story of Hades and Persephone? Hmm. Okay. He's saying there are several versions. It kind of depends on who, which version you um, are resonating with. Ultimately, there are lessons of sacrifice. There are lessons of um, judgment. There are lessons of um, true character in this story. Um, changing of your perceptions um, is also as well. Okay, just stepping back on that. I, I'm not familiar with the entire story of Hades and Persephone. I think I have snippets of it kind of in my head um, from books and things that I've read. But um, yeah, everything that he said really resonates with me. And in kind of my understanding of the story. Um, there were changes in opinions, um, getting to know someone. Um, he's just saying, yeah. <laughs> okay, so he's kind of wanting me to wrap that one up. But um, I hope that resonates with you, Amanda. If you have more questions specifically on that story, or if you want to ask him about maybe one of the elements that he called out, feel free to post again. Okay, what advice does he have for discerning authentic gods and his energy from tricksters? Yes, this is a really good question. And I feel like this question doesn't necessarily only um, 
apply to Hades, but also to any energy that you're calling in to speak with. Um, really, this goes to how do you manage your boundaries and how do you work with your angelic team to really ensure that you're speaking to the right person when you're channeling? Um, he's, uh, he's saying, um, using discernment, checking with yourself. Does this energy feel like um, someone that you would wish to speak with? Yes or no? If it's a no, ask them to leave. Have your angels immediately bounce them. Have Archangel Michael right there with you to have them removed um, because you don't want to speak with beings that A, make you uncomfortable or are lower, lower vibrational in frequency and or um, really just sap your energy. Um, there are high vibrational beings that you will want to eventually, if you're actively channeling and practicing and trying to get to know new beings, um, you will definitely be challenged. And there's some beings that are so high vibrational that I even have kind of a hard time holding on. But it feels different than a being that I know is not being upfront or honest. But ultimately, I don't really have that problem because I also set very strict boundaries in that Archangel Michael is right there with me whenever I call any sort of being into my home or anywhere near my energy. So he's there with me. He's my bouncer. He also really helps um, with the uh, with the rest of my team. Um, I ask that he and my team um, basically introduce me to beings that are going to benefit me for my highest good, but also are high vibrational in frequency only. So um, Hades here, he's still high vibrational. He feels very different to maybe my guardian angel, but he is here in um, a legitimate capacity and um, is not here to make me uncomfortable or steal my energy or play tricks on me uh, or anything like that. So um, I am very comfortable in communicating with him and I have been since he first kind of showed up and um, I know also that if a being just kind of shows up, they've already gone through kind of my filtering system, my boundary system through Archangel Michael and my guardian angels and other boundaries that I have set around my physical environment and my energetic environment. So um, I, with calling in a being, you need to also be very specific. Um, so don't just call in, hey, anybody want to talk to me? Um, just be very clear. I would like to speak to Hades, ask him to come in um, and trust and know that that is who is coming in and not some other being that maybe is trying to trick you or whatnot. If you're worried about that, really reinforce your boundaries, focus on connecting with beings that you're very comfortable with get very practiced with conversing with those beings. And then maybe once you feel a little bit more comfortable, you can maybe call in a being that maybe you've never met before and ask your angels to provide an introduction. So you feel your angels with you, they're right there, and they're literally introducing you to someone like you would be introduced to a new person in your physical life, a new coworker, a new uh, friend um, of a friend, or you know, a new uh, person at a party, whenever you are able to socialize in physical form uh, with people. So definitely, um, making sure that you are you know being very crystal clear as to who you're allowing within your boundaries now all of that's to say too don't worry too much or don't be fearful in that you're going to be tricked or some energy is going to come in that's going to trick you because the more fearful you are the more um worried that you're going to be about that the more you're going to attract that and it energy really attracts energy so um, being very clear about um, who you are interested in connecting with, having those boundaries set, and just have fun and be really comfortable in you know who's coming in. Um, and if there are, you know, maybe feelings of, oh, this is off or I'm not super comfortable, even when you're speaking with someone that you deem as high vibrational, you can ask them to leave and ask your team to make sure that their energy has left. Um, so then you can just know, okay, I don't resonate with that being and I can move on. So definitely, definitely know that when you channel, when you're um, performing mediumship or connecting in any sort of healing or energetic capacity, 
with the spiritual side, spiritual realm, spirit in general, um, you have a lot of free will choice and a lot of control over your energy and the energies that come within that. So um, I would definitely exercise that and be really confident in moving forward as you practice. So I hope that um, resonated with not only the person who asked that, but anyone else who is also doing a lot of channeling practice and working uh, with spirit, because it's always super important to watch your energy, watch your boundaries, just be very uh, confident and know that you are in control. You have free will choice and they have to respect it. And if they don't, Archangel Michael will kick them to the curb <laughs> with his fiery sword and his badass vibes because he's awesome. So um, just, yeah, have no worries. Okay, so um, who a lot of you are asking him to come in and get a sense of his energy. And maybe you've had to ask him to step back a little bit. He is, his energy is quite intense. Um, but I honestly, I kind of like that. Um, I think I've said that many times before. I really enjoy seeing um, kind of those intense energies and, and really feeling that and connecting with it um, and just allowing them to be as they are. I think Hades is just generally, in general, uh, very intense in his energy. Um, okay, let's see. Was I Metis in a past life? Athena's mother, first wife of Zeus. This is Asia. Um, Hades is saying no, but you have had um, energy. Ooh, okay, he's kind of showing. He's saying you're not necessarily that being, but you have had experiences with that energy of Metis and um, either um, connected to that energy in some way, or you've had really deep connections, like deep life experiences with that energy. So he's not showing me that you were that being, but that, um, or have been that being or are that energy, but more you've had really close connections with them. So that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so many believe that the underworld is fire and brimstone and, um, uh, I mean, that's one perception of it, but at the same time, there is also all these other versions and, and other ways of being. So as we're awakening and as we're recognizing that we're beings soul of soul, love and light, um, it's much easier to actually come to the uh, realization and connect with the reality that um, there is no hell. There is no underworld. We all get to go to heaven and we get to go again on this crazy merry-go-round called earth if we wish to, or we can go somewhere else. We can go to the Pleiades or any other being, uh, or be any other being that we wish to be, um, as we experience a light in its many forms. And that's pretty exciting. Um, it's pretty awesome. Whew, okay, so I'm seeing here a comment. Um, this person has had interactions with Hades and then something felt off. It has happened with multiple deities that appeared to just show up and I worked with and to do a lot of self work. So I've taken some steps back and build more upon my boundaries. Perfect. That's awesome. Yeah, not to say that you can't um, interact with beings or you shouldn't interact with beings that pop up and introduce themselves to you. But um, having those boundaries and really having the self-love and care to prescribe to those boundaries and request that spirit um, work within those boundaries is really important. Uh, Hades is reminding me of some more lighthearted boundaries that I have had to set <laughs> um, because he thinks this is really important um, because he's done this before, but it was okay. And then in the moment, it was okay. Um, he's popped in when I'm kind of falling asleep, getting ready to go to sleep. And he's, he's done that a few times. Um, but when I was first starting to channel, and I think I've shared this with some people, um, uh, maybe in some of the mediumship classes or in other channelings, when I was first starting to channel, I was really, really open 
and I would go to sleep and I'd wake up throughout the night just feeling tons of spirit beings around me, tons of energy. My entire room was filled with fairies one time. It was lovely and fun to wake up to them, but I was also really exhausted. I, you know, had a long day at work the day before and I had to get up to go work the next day. And I had a really hard time struggling with um, setting boundaries of not being woken up in the night because of beings wanting to talk to me. Um, so definitely you can request that you don't get woken up by energy wanting to speak to you and invite them instead to join you in your dream state. Invite them to join you in your dreams. And I've done this as part of my boundaries. And I love it because I get to have some crazy dreams and we're having a lot of ascension symptoms right now. So we're already like having really crazy vivid dreams. But I also get to hang out with like really cool beings in my dream state. And when I'm in my dream, I know that they're there. I know that they're there, but they're not disturbing my physical sleep and I'm actually getting some rest. Um, so it's really important that you can notice those things that are bothering you or notice where you're like, okay, I'm not very comfortable with being woken up all the time. One time I had a set of brownies um, and sprites. There were brownies on one side, sprites on the other, and they were playing in my hair when I was sleeping and they were laughing in my ears. And I, at the time I didn't have a lot of clear audience. And so it freaked me out. <laughs> I was like, what the heck is this? And um, I, you know, just kind of had to tune in and I realized I had sprites and brownies and trolls. I love trolls. They're so great. Um, they were playing all on my bed and hanging out around me and having the greatest party um, just hanging out and uh, having a really good time. But I was, I, you know, you can't be mad at them. <laughs> They're just so darn cute. But at the same time, it's like, man, I really have to get sleep. So um, I, once I recognized, okay, this is a problem. I'm getting woken up by all these beings and fairies and all this energy. I have to function in my reality <laughs> as a human. I have to be able to sleep. So um, I need to set some boundaries because this is becoming um, a problem and I don't want channeling or mediumship or being open to spirit to be any sort of problem for me. So there's definitely... Um, opportunities where you can fine tune your boundaries and really they're going to be tailored to you and your experience. So um, have fun with it too. I always love to invite them into my dreams and I love to invite them into my space um, if they wish to join me. When I am awake, they can come in and um, hang out, but sometimes I need them to step away so I can focus on things. So I never feel bad about asking them to leave or step away because I need to focus because I'm a human. Even though I am able to connect with spirit and talk to them and feel them and sometimes see them and mostly in my mind's eye, but I've seen flashes and different things here and there. It's been really fun. Um, it's important that I also have my human life and my human experiences. So always keep it in balance and think about that. What does that balance look like to you? Uh, more boundaries there. <laughs> um, okay, so Timothy has an interesting question here. What is the role of shadow work for spiritual growth and is it necessary? I think this is a really good question. I think a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on your shadow self and doing that shadow work and um, trying to, I don't know, clear it or I don't know really what a lot of people do, but I'm going to ask um, Hades to come in on this. He's saying a shadow self or um, the, that side of yourself that maybe is not um, as awakened or as open or as, um, uh, as light as um, we all want to be. Um, there are elements to us where we have to process things. Um, we have two sides to us sometimes. He's saying that um, this contrast is important for growth. However, you don't necessarily need to um, pursue growth solely by focusing on your shadow self. So there are some people who that's like their jam. They like to focus in on the shadow self, the shadow work, you know, um, really addressing that shadow element to yourself. And, and some people um, just know and allow that 
that part of yourself to be a part of everything that you do. We are all on, we are all made up of contrasts. Um, and it's really there to help bring forward that growth. And you don't necessarily have to focus on it all the time. Um, I'm asking him if he has anything. Um, he He's saying that this is up to you to choose. How do you incorporate your shadow self in your own spiritual practice and your path? So some people love to work in that space. Some people um, just accept it and move on or allow it to be present as a part of the whole. Um, some people completely ignore it. And that's another side of the, the, uh, the scale there. Um, ultimately, whatever you feel comfortable with and whatever you're allowing yourself to focus on and work through at the time is the best place to be. You can use your shadow work. Um, you can use your shadow self. You can use um, a lot of the techniques that kind of come with what shadow work is. Um, but uh, it's all unique to you and you get to make that choice. Um, and he's gesturing to me. I am more of the mind that I just recognize I'm a whole being, not just of light, but there's also some dark there. There's some contrast. I've had some lower vibe experiences and, and they've really informed and shaped some of my own opinions and decisions in my life path. And um, as a person who likes to focus on healing and solutions, I like to incorporate that part of me and make sure that all of me as a whole person is together and aligned and moving forward in the direction that I choose on my path. So um, I'm more of the let's just encompass it all and move forward, not really worry about it too much. Um, but there are some who maybe feel that there's more emphasis for them in their path. So it all just goes down to discernment for you. What do you feel like you need to focus on uh, for your own growth and your development? You can always turn to your guardian angels for assistance in this as well. They can help guide you um, to resources, to um, conversations, to opinions that maybe provide some clarity as you make those choices. Great question, Timothy. Thank you. Um, someone, I'm sorry, I don't see your name. Um, yes, and that's funny. I recently struggled with this because I wanted the messages and had to do healing work on um, their sleep. When they were sleeping, they were doing this work. And um, yeah, it can be um, definitely a balance <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, other people are also experiencing goblins in their hair terrified until um, they spoke with their teacher and she clarified the lessons they were trying to teach me. Beautiful. Yeah. Goblins. I love trolls. I love goblins. I love all the fey beings. Um, they are in, in and of their own right, very unique and interesting uh, energies. The trolls I particularly resonate with um, because I just, I think they're hilarious. <laughs> They're so kind of like a curmudgeon-y, but in a really cute way. And they do, oh, sorry, I keep shaking my computer. They do um, uh, definitely um, sometimes pose some tricky uh, energy, but uh, ultimately they are very good at heart and um, they're really fun to hang out with. So I enjoy them a lot. Um, and I also loved seeing them when I went to Iceland a few years ago. They were, I think, the highlight of my trip. It was so great to connect with their energy in that environment, in a different location. And um, just to really feel them there was really um, exciting for me. Um, okay, let's see here. Brian is asking a question. Can you tell us what a typical day is for you? Um, uh, yeah. He's saying um, he is not bound by time. There is no concept of day versus night. Um, he uh, will detail his activities that he likes to pursue. He works with many energies upon the earth. And many humans who resonate with him or wish to speak with him directly. Um, he also 
uh, often works with um, individuals who are contributors to the greater collective consciousness. There are some people who are a little bit more active or um, have a, a bigger platform to that collective consciousness, like writers in particular is what I'm getting a sense of. That's how he kind of kept popping up for me over the last um, almost seven, eight months. Um, and it's just really fascinating. It just kind of seemed to be a trend for me. Um, so he really kind of was thrown into my consciousness through that uh, modality of, of writing, of literature, and also some TV shows and, and different um, uh, artistic outlets really draw a lot of his energy in sometimes. So he works with a lot of different types of people. Um, I'm asking him if there's anything else. He's saying, yes, he also um, is part of a collective that works with galactic beings here on Earth and other spiritual beings like the he also works with the archangels. He works with guardian angels um, more in line with when he's connecting with humans. And a lot of his energy is perceived through the media in which he is um, uh represented so those stories the myths the imagery there's a lot of artwork about him um, a lot of the historical pieces are also still very resonant and um, quite energetic he's saying um, he uh, sometimes pops into different areas especially in the uh, greek um, country of greece where a lot of his um, imagery it still is and people connect to him there in different ways but um, he just really enjoys the work of um, connecting with humans. He doesn't necessarily need to oversee an underworld or maintain that role. And as he was talking about earlier, his role evolves um, and has evolved greatly since um, there has been a decline in people who see him as the god of the underworld. And that's their reality when they leave Earth. Um, so it's... Uh, more of an evolution for him and he's just a he's he's saying he um, takes great honor and pride in the work that he does with many many beings many people too great question brian thank you um here's a good question how does hades and lucifer resonate with each other um hades is saying we are on the same team there is no um, uh, rivalry. There is no um, uh, issues. They, they consistently work um, with humans. They consistently work to bring forward the contrast and to assist us as we um, learn the lessons that we need to learn within our spiritual uh, path and our mission when we come here on earth. He does not intentionally create um, any sort of low vibrational experience. Um, he is simply there to um, help process that contrast or process an experience. So um, also Archangel Lucifer, he um, has risen from the void and, and Hades has done this in his own way as well. He's saying, um, when there was a lessening of the belief of the underworld, the Greek version of it, where he is more predominantly um, uh, viewed, um, he had to lift, um, he lifted in vibrational frequency when there was that lessening of that creating that reality by humans. Like we don't resonate with that image of um, the afterlife anymore. We've evolved. Our culture has changed. Um, there are other versions of an afterlife and Archangel Lucifer has also played a role in um, the hell version of an afterlife. And um, he's just saying that they are quite uh, similar in their paths. And uh, Archangel Lucifer, however, the beautiful morning star um, has um, different roles than what he has now. Um, there is much uh, work to be done, um, but in both paths. So he, he does a little bit of different work. Archangel Lucifer does some different work, um, but ultimately they're here to help others in their enlightenment, in, in their awakening. Um, and so they definitely resonate with each other on that, um, on that point, and um, they, they definitely do. 
Okay, let's see here. Mina is saying that she had to teach her son to set boundaries and ask Archangel Michael for assistance before he sleeps. And it really works for him now. Thank you to Ashley for the advice. Yeah, awesome. That's really great. Yeah. And for people who have children, learning, you know, teaching them how to ask for boundaries or for assistance um, in all areas of their life is very important because the more they um, have the control over their energy, over their experience around like sleeping, especially with when they're so open spiritually, um, it's really, really important to have that um, uh, conversation and to teach them and and to help them through that and know that they're not alone and it's not scary. I know um, when I was growing up, I would feel a lot of energy and it kind of freaked me out. I didn't really know who was around. I didn't have a good understanding of uh, how angels worked, how my guardian angels worked. Um, and I always felt like I was being watched and it really, um, I think made it very difficult for me sometimes to sleep or be comfortable. Um, but over time I just kind of like tuned it out and I kind of turned that part of me off a little bit. And it was several, many years, um, before I was at a point where I needed to reopen myself to move forward in my life. And um, so happy that I got to do that. Um, some people don't always recognize that there's an opportunity to, to evolve or to, to kind of open up again. Um, and it's just important to do so. So that's awesome that you taught him how to do that and work with Archangel Michael. And Archangel Michael is stepping forward and saying, please um, turn to me if you wish for assistance with your children. He will bring in um, guidance and assistance for anyone who needs it. Beautiful. Um, Michelle is asking, if we want to work with Hades, what are the best times or situations that he would be an ally in? This is a great question, Michelle. Hmm. Uh, Hades is saying, if you wish to work with me consistently, uh, ultimately, when you are of a quiet mind, um, and when you are able to fully sense my energy, um, that is when the real work will begin. Um, it takes some acclimating to his energy to get comfortable. As many of you have felt um, calling him in tonight, he is a little bit more intense. Um, so just getting comfortable and getting used to him is a really good thing to start practicing if you want to work with him on a more consistent basis. But as you move forward along your path, as you practice and sense his energy and feel more comfortable, uh, he would um, be of value in um, in many, he's showing many situations. He's showing as you are trying to make a decision, he could show you and help you kind of feel the contrast of the different choices that you have to make. He cannot make those choices for you, but he can help you get gain clarity as to what is the best choice for you. And that really encompasses, I'd say, a majority <laughs> of the um, kind of the more guidance situations in which you would ask a spiritual being to come in. Um, he's also saying he can speak with you of his perspective if you wish to gain a different perspective about um, many topics. Um, he has observed humans for a very long time here on Earth um, for what we perceive as time. Um, and he has always found uh, pleasure and value in interacting with humans. So if you wish to learn more about maybe your own personal history or your past lives, or um, he's highlighting other cultures from the past, so ancient Greece, he's even saying ancient Egypt. Um, he's highlighting a lot of other ancient cultures that a lot of us are really re um, interested in or resonate with he can step forward and provide some uh, guidance or help in um, bringing forth um, resources for you that would resonate for you. Kind of like your guardian angels do when you find that perfect YouTube video that just hits the spot when you really need some guidance or that perfect little pearl of wisdom there. Um, so he can help provide that and work with your team. Um, he's gesturing to me and saying um, he's highlighting my... Um, process. I have a board of trustees. You can call it 
your squad, your team, um, your council, um, your fellowship, whatever kind of um, verbiage you like. But um, I like to call it my board of trustees because whenever I call them in, it's a large group of ascended masters and beings that I trust implicitly to help provide the best guidance for me in the moment. And I always envision them at this really long conference table in this office that I used to work at um, when I was living in a larger city and I was working as a legal assistant. So um, it's just so fascinating how that kind of works together. And um, he's saying you can also ask him to join a council or a group such as my board of trustees um, to bring forth um, a perspective when you need it. So there's many ways you can work with him. Um, first step is to get comfortable with his energy and to really uh, feel comfortable interacting with him. It may take some people a little bit longer than others to get comfortable, um, but it's just very, um, uh, he's just very open to working in a capacity that um, is useful to you. So however that looks to you, Michelle, and to anyone else who's interested in working with him, definitely feel free to explore that and see how that feels for you. Um, where does the idea of Hades and Lucifer being evil come from? That's a really good question. Um, ultimately, he's saying uh, the concept of that contrast. Um, our reality is often structured in terms of good versus evil or good and bad, light and dark. Um, and while there are truths to many of those contrasts, um, the religious systems in which they were framed um, kind of dictate the rules in which who um, in which uh, certain beings are are termed or kind of dubbed the evil beings. Um, so partly it's humans' reality, partly it is the energy that is brought forth to help us process and move forward along our spiritual paths. Um, so for Hades in, in the Greek culture, when he kind of was um, the the dark one of the um, the religious structure, uh, he played a very specific role. He provided that contrast to allow people to make choices in the best capacity that they could at the time. Now, um, in our day and age here on Earth, um, a lot of people still use the framework of um, Lucifer being the devil or Satan or the um, you know, bad, uh, the, the epitome of the bad or dark light or dark energy, um, you know, where sinners go to get punished um, in hell. So there, there's this contra uh, construct there um, that is used in a lot of uh, religious perspectives. And that's all fine and good. You know, if you if a person chooses to live within that reality, that is what they will receive. That is how they will um, move forward. But um, as the energy is anchoring here on the planet and as we are awakening and recognizing ourselves to be more of a higher vibrational frequency of a, a higher person, you know, we are just a fraction of who we are as a full soul being of love and light. And, um, once we kind of wrestle with that and kind of get comfortable with that idea, our reality changes quite quickly, to be honest. And it's um, very fascinating how we can simply just kind of fall into remembering, yeah, that's who we are. And there are some elements to, you know, being uh, more open or more spiritual in that sense um, that resonates with some people versus others. Um, like uh, from in my uh, spiritual path, I don't really, you know, mess with a lot of tools like Ouija boards or pendulums or dowsing rods or those kind of things. It's I do like to use oracle cards. I don't use them too often anymore. I, I use them as a tool to really fine tune my intuition. But ultimately, um, they just don't resonate with me. But they are maybe the bee's knees for someone else on their spiritual path. So um, long story short, it is in the construct of the framework in which we view our universe or our reality. It is the thought processes that deem someone a good person or a bad person, when in reality we're a whole person and we're a being of love. Um, so it's ultimately um, how how they are perceived um, through those those constructs and filters. 
Um, and it is of each of our own choosing to follow, believe, discern, uh, reject what that which does not resonate with us. And Hades is saying, this is the beauty of being a human on earth. We get to create our reality. And um, while there are some reality or some constructs or frameworks that are more popular or more um, perceived than others, there's always choice. There's never um, one, um, one way to be or one way to think or one way to experience this beautiful and amazing world that we live in as humans. And um, they get to perceive and experience um, uh, earth and our realities as they work with us. So it's always fascinating to them. He's saying it's um, it's always new to see how someone sees the world. And when he gets to work with humans, he gets to um, see how they interact with the energy around them. And uh, he finds that very interesting. So that's pretty cool to hear that he finds our um, our uh, perspectives and, and ways of um, seeing the world and the ways we're interacting with reality is as something interesting to him and to I'm sure other spiritual beings as well. Uh, awesome. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So I'm getting some confirmation that that resonates with you. I'm really happy um, that to, uh, to hear that. And I hope you guys had a great time. Um, this There were some great questions. I just want to say thank you so much to Hades for, um, I'm not going to say pestering me, but for being really consistent and continually showing up for me to push me to um, channel him for you guys. Not that I was super uncomfortable with him, but I just had to kind of get used to his energy and his frequency. And I think today was the perfect day to channel him. And I'm really, really happy and proud that I get to work with him. And I'm going to definitely be talking with him more. Um, maybe I'll add him too to the mystery wheel. Um, that would be fun. Um, so yeah, you guys, thank you so much. I hope you have a great evening. I will be posting this um, to my YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can always join Channeling with Love, the Facebook group, to see me live. Um, and go to channelingwithlove.com as I have some several events coming up and new services if you're interested. Um, I didn't even get to talk about those, but that's okay. Um, uh, and I hope you all have a really great evening and a great time. And I will be live next Thursday um channeling um i think it's a mystery channeling actually i can never remember but i will post in the comments and also post in the description box on youtube what i'm going to be channeling next so definitely check it out um, i have a good recommendation here bring all three greek gods together I don't know if I'd be able to handle all of that energy, but maybe what I could do is some pre-records with each of them and um, maybe blend that together into one video or something. I could get creative with it. That would be fun. Um, but uh, Or maybe I'll challenge myself to having all three of them hang out and uh, answer questions. Um, we'll see. Maybe I'll throw that out there as an event. But um, thank you guys so much again, and I hope you all have a great one and talk to you later. Bye now.